Another yeah, big one right there on that side there. There comes a big one right there. Get her streaking in that thing, got her. All right, guys, we're out here on Lake Champlain. I'm gonna show you the way I like to use my live scope. I'm gonna show you some of my settings and uh, I'm gonna kind of explain to you how this system works. You know, what you wanna look for, the kind of fish you wanna look for that you know you can catch, uh, how to tell the difference between a bass and a trash fish. We're up here on Lake Champlain. Absolute phenomenal smallmouth fishery up here. It's just so many fish, so many quality smallmouth. They're so easy to catch. Uh, it's just an excellent place, but I'm gonna kind of explain to you this area we're in right here. We're sitting out here in 16 to 20 foot of water. We've got grass, rock. That's the two main ingredients for smallmouth. It gives these smallmouth something to suspend around. I mean, smallmouth love to be on bottom, but they're also hunters, so they're constantly moving. Uh, makes them easy to see with a live scope because they're usually up off the bottom a foot or two. They're on the move. They're always looking for something to eat. And uh, so it makes them, makes them easier to see, you know? I mean, smallmouth is probably the easiest fish to fish for using forward-facing sonar. So we're gonna show you here what to look for. We're in an area right here that's got a lot of fish. You can catch a whole bunch of them. A lot of two pounders, but you know, about every 10th fish, you catch a four to four and a half. Uh, a lot of that two to three and a half pound fish, that's what Champlain's so full of, is that two to three and a half pound, pound fish range. So uh, we're gonna get out here, we're gonna scope around, we're gonna explain to you exactly what I like to do. I usually always use a drop shot. When I'm in a tournament, I use Maxent. When I'm fun fishing, I use Elastec. Catch a whole lot more fish with Elastec. The smallmouth don't really care. Uh, I guess the reason I use Maxent in a tournament is just in case if I get around a picky one, you know, I feel like maybe she'll bite it a little better. Uh, but a, I use a size two drop shot, split shot hook, Gamma Gatu. That's what I always use for my drop shot. Sometimes the fish are really finicky and I'm using a really small bait, really light line, which this is eight pound Yozuri T7 I'm using now, but a lot of times I'll go down to six. I like a number four, even a number eight drop shot split shot hook. I know that sounds insane, but I'm telling you, that little bitty hook does not, you, you don't lose any more fish on it. Uh, a lot of times I use a four, but usually the number two is what I use. Uh, it just fits the bait better. It's got a little bit of a wider bend in the hook, and uh, that's the one I like to use the most. I use a half ounce Art Tungsten drop shot weight. Uh, I like the bell shape. I always use a half when I'm smallmouth fishing. Doesn't really matter how shallow or how deep they are. Uh, even if they're in 10 foot of water, I like a half. Smallmouth don't really care about the fall a lot on drop shot. The quicker you can get it to them, the better. Because a lot of times, like today, like today, we've got a lot of wind. You need that bait to get to them quick because I'm only going to have a few seconds to actually see that fish and see my bait hit the water and make sure I'm on target. Uh, that's the most important part. With live scope, the most important thing is accuracy. I mean, if you land 10 foot short of them or 10 foot past them, you're better to be long than be short, I can tell you that. If you go 10 foot past them, you can always burn it real quick, get it back over the top of them and let it go down on them. If you're short, you're gonna have to reel that entire cast back in, make another cast on a day like today when it's windy, a lot of times you lose vision of that fish in your screen, her position, where she's at, and you might never find her again. That fish is done, you gotta go on to the next one. So accuracy is so crucial. That's the very most important part of this, is accuracy. So let's see if we can find one real quick and show you exactly what to look for. Knowing which fish to throw to, like right here, I got a small mile right here under the boat, but I got the wind at my back, moving pretty quick, so I'm gonna let that one go. But here's another one right there in front of me. So that fish is out there at 40, 45 foot. Every, you can see my drop shot going down right to the fish. There's the fish right there on bottom. She went right down on her. She spun around, she's looking at it. Now they don't all bite, but most of them do. And there was a pretty good one there, but the, there was a little one there with her and she got it. That happens a lot smallmouth fishing out here. These fish are so aggressive they're always in patches, there's two to five of them. 
A lot of times the smaller ones get it first. But you saw, saw that fish and, and I made the perfect pitch to her. Went right down on top of her head, got her to bite. And that, that's, that's the most crucial part of this. You got to let that bait go right down on top of them or at least within you know, four or five foot of them. That's, that's the most important thing. Get it within four or five foot of them. That's a solid two, two and a quarter, nothing big. A lot of fun to catch. But that drop shot, of course they wreak havoc on it, but it's just such an effective way the drop shot is because you can get down to them quick. And I've got a lot of these fish, a lot of these smallmouth that get it before it ever gets to the bottom. And, and another thing I like about having the drop shot is I can see that weight and the bait going down at the same time. If I see that weight stop, I know she's got it. A lot of times you're throwing a Ned rig, you see the fish run up there, but you don't know if she's eat it. You can watch your line, but on a day like today when it's windy and up here up north, it's always windy, it seems like. You can't, you can't tell if the fish has got it by watching your line. So you have to uh, check it. You have to pull, put tension on your line. Well, a lot of times when you do that, it causes the bait to quit its descent and kind of slow it down. And it gives that smallmouth a, a split second to really get a look at that bait. It don't look natural and they, they'll end up bailing and they don't bite. So that's why I like a drop shot over anything else because I can see that weight stop just reel down and jerk. You don't even have to check the fish. If you see that weight stop, she's got it. She's gonna bite 100%. You can tell by the fish's body language on this screen immediately if she's gonna bite. A bass is always going to make two movements towards a bait. They're gonna react in a positive manner or a negative manner. Uh, trash fish, they, they act like you know, nothing matters. You throw out there, you go right down by them. They just keep swimming, doing their thing like nothing's ever happened. Uh, bass are always going to be a very vertical line. Uh, I always try to explain it like a, like your finger. It's going to look just perfectly straight. Drum, carp, uh, pike, got a lot of drum up here up north. You're always going to be able to see that fish is out here by about, at about 75, 80 foot. You're going to be able to see that fish's tail you'll be able to see it behind her moving. That is a sure sign that that is a trash fish. It'll look a lot bigger than a lot of the other stuff that you're throwing at too. You can tell like, man, that's a big fish. Well, it's called it's a drum or something. Now I keep my live scope always, my forward range at 100 foot when I'm smallmouth or spotted bass fishing. When I'm largemouth fishing, I usually keep it on 80. Uh, just because I'm usually throwing it cover and uh, with largemouth, a lot of times you're not seeing them. You know, you're you're seeing the cover that they're on. They're they're usually down on the bottom more, and uh, so I want to see the cover. I want to make little accurate little roll casts to them out there at 60, 70 feet uh, when I'm fishing for them. Unless you know, sometimes I'm fishing brush piles, throwing a jig or a big worm or a jerk bait out over them. Then I'll have this thing ran out at 100. But when I'm smallmouth fishing, I want to be able to see pretty much as far as I can. And this thing is, it's its very detailed out to 120, but that's just really further than I want to be able to, I really want to make a cast with a drop shot or a Ned rig or anything to a small mouth. For one, you're not going to get as good of hooks. That they, they usually always go straight to it and eat it. And so if I throw out there one at 115 foot and she she's more likely going to go straight to it and eat it, I'm going to get a very, not not that good of a hook set into that fish because she's way out there. I got a lot of line out, a lot of wave action, so my line's going to be down kind of in the water, and and so I, I like to try to get that fish. The optimal range is that 70 range, like right here. I got one coming in the screen, right there at 80. I'm gonna let her get there about, and I'm moving towards her, and I and I know that, so I'm gonna lead that fish. And when I say lead her, I'm gonna throw just a little short of her. And you see my bait, see she's on. And see that fish didn't go right to it. So I can pretty much instantly tell that that fish isn't gonna bite. So I'm gonna reel it right on in. I know I made a good cast, okay? I wash my bait, go down in front of the fish. I can see the fish in the screen. That's another really important part. You want to see your bait and the fish in the screen at the same time and you want the broadest return of your bait and the fish in the screen at the same time. So if the, if the bait is kind of fuzzy, 
not real bright, but the fish is, you're either left or right of her. Uh, if the bait's real bright and the fish is fuzzy, you're either left or right of her. So I want the brightest return. You know, another thing doing this, you always really want the wind either in your face or at your back. Uh, reason why is because, like right out there, I've got two, but I got a crosswind. So I could throw out there and potentially get one of them fish to bite. But the problem with that is, is there's a lot more calculation goes into it. I'm gonna have to lead that fish to the right because with the wind blowing, it's gonna put a bow in my line. You always want your bait to fall in a dead slack line. I mean, completely slack. Uh, you want that bait to go straight to them. So, but it, so it's gonna put a bow in my line. It's gonna drift that bait with the wind. So it might drift me past her further left than I want to go and then when you go to shake it that bait's just not going to look natural down there and a lot of times they're not going to bite it especially the bigger smallmouth they're a little bit more educated a little wiser so you want the wind directly in your face or directly at your back that way that line can be straight you can get a good shake on that bait make it sit there and dance do what it's supposed to do that fish will ease over to it and she'll suck it in almost every time I like to run my sensitivity up this is the new uh, 34 transducer that I've got here. I'll run my, my sensitivity usually on 70. It's where it is all the time. See, there's a bass right there. Uh, but I usually run my sensitivity on 70 all the time. Sometimes 68, sometimes as high as 74, just depending on sunlight, cloud cover, uh, water clarity, all of it is a factor. Uh, uh, this is another thing right here. It's 18 foot deep. I've got my depth set on 25. I always want my depth range about 10 foot deeper than the bottom. Okay, so if you're in 30 foot of water, I want my depth range on 40. Uh, another thing is, is a lot of times like Smith Lake or Lanier, these big, uh, big spots, they get out over really deep water and suspend following around these blueback herrings. The, most of the fish will only be down 20, 25 foot deep, but you're out over 80 to 100 foot of water. You don't want to waste a bunch of screen. You don't want to run that down here, like right here at 50 foot, and look at all this wasted space here. I've Half the screen's taken up, and, and it's useless. There's no reason for it. It makes everything smaller. So the bottom is right there, uh, what you see at 20. I want to roll that down to about 30 foot, 25 even. Uh, it blows stuff up, makes it easy to see your bait. You get a better detailed look at the fish and what's going on when you throw at them. But them spotted bass are out there, say they're all at 20, 25 foot and you're out over 80 to 100 foot of water. Run that depth range down at 30, 35. That's where you want it. It doesn't matter that the bottom's down there at 100 foot, you're not fishing that deep. You know where the fish are. They're all in that 20 to 25 foot range. So keep your depth range at that 30, 35 and it saves you a lot of space on that screen. It blows things up and you can see a lot better. She's a three and a half to four pounder at least. She's going down to the bottom to it. Let's see if she'll bite. She got it. Dang it, she had it right there. She's back on again. They just barely pick it up, some of them, them bigger ones. Got her. Kept her in the screen the whole time for you too. I think you should be good in three and a half. That fish showed interest in my drop shot. And she she was falling, she actually touched it two or three times uh, and did not didn't eat it. Uh, so and I could tell that she was still in a biting mood. Beautiful fish. Still in a biting mood. So I instantly laid down my drop shot and picked up the Ned rig to show her something different and uh, threw it back in there. In the first cast, I threw just a little out in front of the drop. And she, you saw she'd come up to it, went down, but didn't actually go to the bait. She swam, went back up the grass. I could tell right there on the edge of the grass was the sweet spot. That's where I was gonna have to throw to catch her because that's where she was holding 
And so that second cast, I made a little bit of feather cast, pulled it to her, let it go down, and she went down there to it and eat it. Uh, on the Ned rig, my setup is the exact same as the drop shot. It is uh, eight, eight pound Yosuri uh, T7 fluorocarbon with 15 pound Yosuri uh, Super Braid and High Vis Yellow. That's, that's what I use and uh, it works. Most important part about tying a drop shot is this step right here. See, the reason I'm going through the front, see the hook is already standing straight on its own. But to ensure that it stays that way, because if you catch a few fish, make a few casts, that hook will turn, turn on you. Always take the line in front of the hook, above the hook, and I keep it tight. Make sure that hook point is facing upwards, not downward. And you have to come back through the front of that hook, hook eye. Come right through the, back through the hook eye, going down towards the back of it. And make a little loop like that. That will always keep that hook straight like that right there every time. And then I take my arc tungsten drop shot weight. That right there is a half. I use the, the bell shape. And it's got the clip like that, but the small mouth and, and when you're catching spots and large mouth, whatever, they jump a lot, especially small mouth. So I go through, clip it like that, and I just make like a, a little overhand loop. You're still gonna lose weight though, either way, just because of how much these fish jump. But I just take and make a make a little loop back on it. That helps it stay a little bit a little bit longer. Usually you can catch eight, 10 fish before you'll lose your weight. And that's about the length I, I use right there. That's I mean that's perfect. And then, you know, we're just fun fishing today, so I'm using a last tech. I'm not using any max scent. And I go right through the nose, and I, I I I come go come in right through the bottom, come out the top like that right there. You know, there's nothing to hang up on out here, so I actually like my hook point sticking out the nose of the bait. That way, I can just kind of reel into the fish, and you got them. But that's the way your your drop shot setup should look if you've done it correctly. Your hook should be standing up perfect like that. That way, when it's sitting there you know, uh, on bottom, that hook will be upright, your bait will be upright, and it'll dance around really good, and small mouth to eat it almost every time. Uh, there's two right there. I'll let you know, let's see what they do. All right, done deal. Good jump too. All right, so you guys have seen me throwing the drop shot, Ned rig, with the forward facing sonar technique that way, which is, I love catching them on spinner rod. That's gotta be my, my all time favorite. But another technique that is absolutely, incredibly deadly with it is throwing a jerk bait. This is a Yozuri 110 deep. Uh, up here, you know, the grass, down to the top of the grass is usually anywhere from 10 to 12, 15 foot. Uh, I like the, the deep because this jerk bait here gets down to that 10 to 12 foot range. I'm throwing this on 10 pound Yozuri T7, 100% fluorocarbon. And this is just a, like a ghost sexy shad color. Uh, the awesome thing about the Yozuri jerk bait is you don't have to change out any of the equipment that comes on it. These are the stock hooks, stock split rings, everything about this jerk bait right out of the bag. It's ready to go. They always run true. Uh, it's just an absolute incredible jerk bait. The darting left and right action, uh, the hunting action of this jerk bait is probably the best I've ever seen out of any jerk bait on the market. I mean, it really hard right, hard left, every twitch of the rod. And these smallmouth love it up here because I can snap it really quick. Sometimes these smallmouth get down on the bottom where you can't see them. Jerk bait is always going to pull them fish up. Whether they want to bite it or not, it's going to make them lift up off the bottom, give away their position, and then you can go back in with a drop shot or an head rig, fish that place thoroughly, and you can usually catch a few of them fish. But jerk bait's an excellent, excellent way to hunt them down and uh, find them, but a deadly, deadly technique in the wintertime, especially throwing it out over cover for big large mouth, big small mouth, big spots. But I get out here, you know, up here, I get out over these big, expansive grass flats. There's not much up here that's different on these places. Um, I look for little holes. I'm constantly using my sonar, my, my live scope, to look for holes in the grass, look for any a taller clump that's taller than the rest, any differentials, differential stuff out there, 
from, from everything else that you're seeing when you're over these flats, I'm looking for that. That's where I want to target making a cast out there on my jerk bait, fishing it really quick, really erratic. You watch these fish just scream up off the bottom and come right to it. Uh, there's several of them right there. A couple of nice ones. Comes one right there begging day. Get it, golly, she's all over it. I see her, got her. I worked that fish, you see how I worked her? I got her right here in the boat and it's a big one, it's a four pounder. I worked that fish, I seen her come up out of the grass She and she wanted it, they, these, these smallmouth, it's a cat and a mouse game with them on a jerkbait. I mean, they get all over it, they get up under it and you see them doing all this stuff. They're following the motion of that jerkbait. And you saw, I started snapping my rod up make that jerk bait really do some erratic stuff and it'll make them just nip at it. I actually watched that fish visibly eat that jerk bait with my eyes right then. I mean, she was that close to the boat when she finally got it. But that Yozuri 110 deep, the darting action of it, they just can't stand it. And usually with your jerk bait, with these jerk baits, that's what catches your biggest small mouth uh, that's on these places. You, they, they all eat the drop shot, they all eat the Ned rig, but the jerk bait gets the biggest ones in the group to eat it. And uh, so that's why, this is exactly how I finished 11th in the tour event here that was here just a week ago. I, I stuck with this 110 deep in my hand all day long, throwing it out over these grass flats, getting these really big smallmouth to eat it. And it was a blast. I mean, I was catching 60, 70 fish a day on it and uh, they were eating it so well, you know. right there that's what the 110 to catch you they absolutely love that thing and you see she had that she actually eat that jerk bait head first anytime you got a fish hooked like that it's because she came up and sucked it in like that and when you pull you know obviously it hooks them like that and pulls you the head of the jerk bait back out but just such a deadly deadly way up here up north and with four facing sonar catching with the 110 yozuri deep uh, this is probably my favorite color. I like something that's got a white base on it, a real blue back, uh, something they can see from a long ways. That jerkbait's so loud and it throws really good in a wind, which is very important up here because wind's always blowing really hard, but just awesome way to catch them. I saw, you guys saw all of that go down right there. And uh, that's, that's just, that's amazing. Just absolutely amazing. Another yeah, big enough on that side there. Here comes a big one right there. Get her streaking that thing, got her. Y'all seen that one? Now, them are the ones you like. They just right to it like a lightning bolt. Them are my favorite. But they just, they really get that jerk bait a lot good. There's a lot of other brands that I've thrown over the years and they just don't bite it. The percentage of the bite hookup ratio is just not the same. A lot of them, they've seen them a lot. They come up there and they get all over and they don't bite. This yo's really 110 deep. About 50% of the ones that come up on it's gonna eat it, gonna get a hook. And it's uh, it's an awesome, awesome way to catch them. See if we can get another one. There's four or five there with that one. Going back into a win, boy, how much it tough. Here they come, they're all over again, got her. But you can wreck them on this jerk bait now. This is, you know, I love catching them on a spinning rod. That's the only reason I'd rather catch them on a drop shot and a, and a Ned rig. This right here is my true most favorite thing to do, and that's jerking. I absolutely love jerking for big northern smallmouth. You just absolutely wreck them. I can't tell you how many 100 to 150 fish days I've had up here on Champlain in the Great Lakes throwing a jerk bait. I mean, it's just, it's insane at the number of fish that you catch up here. I mean, another solid three pounder. And these real high bluebird days with a good breeze like this are the days that you want this sucker in your hand all day. I mean, you never want to put it down because 
they just they bite it on days like it's so good. But them hooks, boy, they just get them. They get them so good. Another solid two and three quarters, two and a half pounder on the Yozuri Deep. Dude, I mean, they just run right to it and eat it. It's amazing. Look at them, here they come. Easing up to it, about four of them right there. If you saw, if you noticed right there, I let that bait pause just for a second and, and, and they lost interest. You don't ever want to stop it like that. You want to keep this thing moving, whether it's, it's moving in the place. That's why a lot of times when they get up there on it, I start snapping my rod upwards so that bait's not moving away from the fish so much. It's still darting, but it's kind of darting upwards like he's trying to get away from them towards the surface. You know, bass are so used to chasing stuff like this up towards the surface and busting it uh, on surface water. It's why top water, you know, there comes one right there. But you want to keep them, keep them coming, keep that bait moving. If you let it stop and they get it just a good look at it at all, uh, these smallmouth, they're, you know, the water's so clear up here up north. I mean, you see the bottom 10, 12 foot deep out here. They'll see that hardware hanging from it and they're just not going to bite it. Uh, but as long as that bait's still moving, they'll, <coughs> they'll tend to usually eat it almost every time. Another thing I love about this jerk bait here is just being able to throw it as far as, I, as you can. Uh, this jerk bait just throws so well. I'm able to throw it really long distance and get the maximum depth out of it. I'm throwing this on a, uh, a 7.1 Phoenix K2. This, is, this here is a medium light, a 7.1 medium light. And uh, I like that longer rod for these small because they jump so much. You can see it's got a lot of give in it. You know, the rod's very parabolic, so when they come up and jump, it's not too stiff. It doesn't tend to pull the hooks away from them. That extra length, though, helps me make a longer cast and fight that fish a lot better, too. But I can really throw that thing a long ways, you know. I always like to give that jerk bait eight or 10 real sharp cranks down, and then I just go to snapping it really fast. What we got here though is just a grass line and these fish are just sitting out off around the edge. They're not actually on the edge. They're inside the outside edge. And, uh, but they're not far inside of it. They're, they're 10 to 20 feet inside that outside edge. Once you get that outside edge, it goes breaking off out here on this point pretty fast. And the fish, you know, smallmouth, the reason a jerkbait's so good on a sunny day is because of the fact they can silhouette that bait really well. But not only that, smallmouth, when it's really sunny like it is today, they like to get shallow, shallower. When it's cloudy, they tend to pull out deeper, suspend. You always got shallow fish, you always got deep fish, no matter the conditions. But this bait here works better when you've got high sun like we've got today with a good chop. That's when it works the best. These smallmouth pull up in the depth range you want them in to be able to present a jerk bait to them right and catch them. But there's lots of perch, lots of L wives up here on this grass. You can see when I scan around, you can see all the perch. See, that's all perch down there on the bottom. They all the way out there in my screen. And they follow that jerk bait up too. That's what these big smallmouth are feeding on, is them perch. I mean, you can see them all out there. They're just, they're, they're all over the place, uh, swimming around those little bit taller patches of grass. Those smallmouth kind of sit just a little bit on the outside of them and just waiting for one of them to mess up. And uh, they'll run up there and get him, you know. And I'm throwing a, you know, this shad colored jerk bait. You can throw, I've got them in the yellow perch, but this this L wife, uh, these L wives is mainly what they've been spitting up a lot. And there is a lot of L wives up on top of this grass too. You'll see them balled up out here uh, <clears throat> as you're going along the outside of this grass. But a lot of these smallmouth been puking up yellow perch too. But I threw the yellow perch some, and and I caught several on it. But I caught a lot more northern pike on the yellow perch. Uh, it didn't seem for the smallmouth to really matter. They they bit this one just as good as they did the yellow perch one. But the pike didn't bite this one as much. 
So that's why I'm throwing the color here I'm throwing. But nine out of 10 times, I am going to throw some kind of a bait fish imitator when I'm fishing for big smallmouth out here around this grass, unless they're exclusively feeding on perch and uh, I can't get them to react to this one very good, then I'll go to a perch color and usually catch them. There she is again, look at that one right there. All over it. See, there goes the fish right there and there's my jerk bait. Now that's one that I would follow back up with a Ned rig or drop shot. You tell that fish, a lot of them run up there to it like that. The thing about smallmouth, they're very curious. They're gonna run up to everything just about and at least look at it, whether they bite it or not. Some of them I can, you know, trick them into biting by snapping that jerk bait, doing something crazy with it. And a lot of them don't see there's a big in there staying down on bottom below it. Big smallmouth. She's easing up to it. But she's staying back, staying back. See, now here she comes. trying to get it golly I literally see her dude right there she wasn't a foot on the surface three and a half four pounder I mean what a phenomenal way to catch them throwing the jerk bait the Ozuri 110 deep out here for these big smallmouth out over grass flats using forward facing sonar such a deadly way to catch these smallmouth always have a drop shot and a Ned rig laid beside you too for them followers a lot of these big ones will follow it in and not commit but when they go back to the bottom, you can pitch on them and catch them, but they absolutely, on a day like today, high sun, good wind, the 110 Yozuri Deep is an absolute phenomenal way to catch them. I mean, they absolutely just rip the rod out of your hand. It is by far my favorite way to catch these big smallmouth bass up here.